All right, welcome Adalo people. Today, what we're going to look at is how to share pages and how to do um, URL parameters. And we can do more than one. So I'm going to show you a use case around this. Uh, in this case, the page that I'm going to be sharing is a project from a project management app. So let me walk you through the workflow, uh, how we've set this up, and uh, yeah, hey, off to the races. So by the way, before we start, let me say that the only component of ours that we're using is the JavaScript component, uh, which is super useful. And uh, yeah, so let's let's take a look. If I'm on my project here, Mitch's test project, there we go and we click on the menu and manage sharing. And then when I get in here, I can click uh, create a public link. And so then in theory, I could copy this, uh, although, Actually, it's not really behaving very well. Luckily, luckily I was ready for this because it happened on the last take. And so here is that link anyways. Now, what happens when I paste this in? You can see we're going to share.planwithpepper.com and I am being redirected. So this page needs a little bit of visual design love. However, you can see shared project, read only, um, and then if I go and add a task to it or something like that, you'll see it pop up. All right, so project task, this is a test task. We're going to add that. And then we'll go and take a look at our project page. Just do a quick refresh. Oh, actually, it's already there. So there we have it. Uh, you can see I am sharing a web app version of this page. It's loading this project based on a link. How do we do it, right? Uh, this is pretty nifty stuff and really important to a lot of use cases. Let's start at the beginning. All right, so when we go and click on this manage sharing page, we get to a sharing options page. And how did we set this up? So uh, basically what I wanted to do is toggle this public link on and off so that you can revoke the link. Um, and you can also, uh, of course, turn it back on and then you know it'll pop up below and you can copy and paste it or use the share link button to send it to people. So if we come to here, assuming the Adalo gods let us do that today, we'll just have to Hold out for a few more seconds as this eventually, any moment now, allows me to click through and actually loads uh, and does its thing. Hold on, guys. Uh, it's definitely going to happen any second now. I'll just keep humming along while we wait for this to painfully maybe eventually yes load okay great so there we are <laughs> eventually we'll edit that out of the video but definitely not on the first version so when we click on uh this guy right here the checkbox there's a few things that are happening one we're toggling um i don't know why it's three layers deep or why it's showing that way because we just went to current project and then um yeah, link sharing over here. So we're just toggling if link sharing is available for this project. The other thing that we're doing is if it's the first time this project is being shared and it does not have a project share link, then we need to create one. So what I'm doing here is using a custom action that is pinging a API for creating UUIDs. And the reason we're doing this is of course, because if I just made the ID one or even some random number, it would be potentially easy enough to just change that parameter in the URL and find a project you're not supposed to access. And so here we have security by obscurity. You can see uh, the link over here, and I will maybe just copy that for later. So we do a get, and when we run the test request, what comes back is some type of uh, very randomized string that we can use as a project ID. All right, so we only, we only do that if the current projects share URL. So basically, if there is no URL yet, we create it. And if we've gone and created that, then what we do is we go and update the current project. Um, so I just put the whole URL in here. This seemed way easier. So the URL is the base URL, URL 
um, the first parameter is ID and the ID is equal to this new value that we've just retrieved. And the way we get that is from this custom action, generate project ID and we take the response. The last thing is if that response is equal to empty, then we're not gonna do this. And really what I should have in there is also an error saying, hey, sorry, we couldn't get an ID for this project or maybe a fallback randomizer or something. Um, but this is the basic of the workflow for now. Okay, so that's how we create the link. Now let's get to the interesting part. How do we make that link actually useful? So what I did over here is create a second web app. It is linked and it shares the same database. And um, so that makes it nice and easy to load projects that have uh, been created in the original web app. Now there's a, a little hidden group down here. And this group has two components in it. One of them is a text field where I'm gonna put the output from my JavaScript and from the JavaScript component rather. And then one of them is the component itself. And so what the component does is it is grabbing from the, uh, from the search, it's grabbing the URL uh, from the search bar. Then it's going and grabbing just the parameters that are at the end of the URL. And if we take a look, you can see these are the uh, parameters right up here. So uh, hold on, Adalo has obscured part of it. Uh, no, here it is. So we have our question mark ID equals right here. And then the target is a second parameter that Adalo inserts. So this is the one we're looking for. So what we're, and you can just take and copy paste this code and make small modifications to it, but I think it's worth explaining is uh, so we grab those uh, URL parameters and then we say params.id, meaning the one that is called ID. Um, so if that exists, then we're gonna return it. Otherwise return, sorry, we couldn't find this project. Uh, and so that allows me to use the text field, although I've actually stopped doing this. Uh, originally I was using the text field just to show an error message. Um, and so here, set this to true to execute the function then uh, change input value. So once we've run this, which is what's gonna happen on the page load, uh, then we are going to change the input value to the result of uh, our arbitrary JavaScript component. And that result is gonna be uh, right here, return params.id. So what we're getting is this right here, this parameter, which is called id. Okay, for those of you who already understand how parameters work, I might have gone a little bit too deep. And for those of you who don't, now you do. Um, so let's move on. The next thing we're going to do is um, mm -hmm, screen follow project list. <laughs> Hold on. Hmm. So that's funny. This link thing is meant to be on click, actually, but we don't use this. So I'm not sure why that's there. I'm just going to delete it. And hopefully, I didn't break anything. All right, uh, so we have the change input value. And so now what's happening is this input value is being updated to show the ID in the URL, this guy right here. Okay, now how do we actually get the project? Well, that's back into the regular Adela realm. So we're going to load a list of projects where the project share URL contains the parameter, so this ID. The reason I use contains is because I actually put the whole URL in there, but it will always contain this ID. And that saved a lot of kind of text processing that's not so easy to do. The next condition is that the project share URL is not equal to empty. And this is really important because if I don't put that and somebody just goes to the root URL without putting in an ID, then they will get a list of every project that doesn't have an ID and that would be really bad. Um, so I put that in there as one of the fail safes. And then the other is link sharing is true. So there actually is a property that gets toggled. And I showed you that that was the main property over here when we click this box. Um, so that's what we're toggling is link sharing. So I put in a second security in there just to make sure that we don't accidentally share data that we're not meant to. A little bit of extra security, usually not bad. Um, so that's really it. Uh, pretty straightforward, I believe. Let me just do a quick review from the top of how this all works. So when we go and click this box, one, we are setting 
the project's link sharing to true. And again, I don't know why it's showing three levels of current project. Maybe it's just because I've gone through three pages. So we're setting link sharing to true. And of course, that's going to make this guy show up over here, sometimes visible, and that is the condition. OK, now um, past that point, we're generating the UUID using the API call uh, that I showed you before. Then we are updating the project so that it has that project share URL. And that way, if someone clicks share link, they are able to well, do exactly that, share the full URL. On the other side of things, if you take a look at the um, at the page that's going to load this, this is the web app. It is made up of a list, which is loading uh, the URL ID from the uh, basically from the JavaScript component. We have uh, a condition that there must be a URL ID set, and that link sharing must be true, uh, and then. From the JavaScript component, just to bridge the gap, what we are doing is grabbing the URL, grabbing the parameters from the URL, checking if there is a ID parameter and returning it, otherwise returning a error message. And what we're doing with this return value is changing the input that's tiny and grouped in here. And that input, once again, is going to be the source for this list right over here. Okay, I hope that made sense. I hope I explained this well. Um, good luck and enjoy and let us know if you have any questions. If you want more cool tips like this, how to use our components and uh, neat Adalo stuff to do and, and just generally how to build really awesome things, uh, then please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video.